जय गुरु जी आई एम वेयरिंग माई ग्लासेज जस्ट टू हाइड माई टीयर्स बिहाइंड माई ग्लासेज बिकॉज एवरी टाइम आई टॉक अबाउट माई सत्संग आई गेट वेरी इमोशनल सो माई सत्संग इज गोज बैक टू अ वेरी लॉन्ग टाइम अगो मैन माई सन हु um who is right now 20 25 years old he um we live in usa um and um my son who was very brilliant academically um very very good all rounder student topper of his high school um he did his high school here in india i sent him to a, a good boarding school and then he went back on a scholarship to grinnell um in us so he came back but his journey started um around 12th grade um when he got into the company of some very bad people and then he got into marijuana drugs and that journey continued on when he came to college even though he was a brilliant kid all of that but he kept hiding this particular aspect of his life so we did not know we had some hints but we did not know so this continued on throughout his college life he was into all that um um because he was so far away from us he was in the hostel we could not keep a close tab on him so it went on for quite a few years we changed his college two times and then there came a stage when um he suddenly there was a argument between father and son because of all that that was happening in his life so he um he decided to leave the house so one fine day he just left and we had no clue where he had gone so it was the most um, traumatic day of my life this was uh, but this was not the end this was just the beginning of his journey so he left um, for uh, uh las vegas we just knew that he had a one way ticket to las vegas but we didn't know where he was and this was the time when covid had just started in us so uh we kept looking for him and unfortunately the laws in us are terrible so the law says that you know if you're above 21 years of age the police will not look for the person even if he's missing they will not because they feel that if being an adult he has made the choice to leave the house on his own so they don't do anything so we had to struggle we hired an ex fbi detective to find him it went on for good month month and half you know we were making trips uh, between me and my husband trying to find him it was just a miracle that one day and that that time i was not associated with guruji i didn't know who he was but i was sitting and praying to hanuman ji and while praying you know i was crying and praying crying and praying suddenly there was a voice that told me that call all the gurudwaras in uh, las vegas i'd never thought of that and so immediately it was 9:30 10 o'clock in the night i called up luckily the first gurudwara i called the person who picked up granthi ji he told me that uh, you know uh, what uh, i don't know how to help you but there is one person here dr amri uh, sorry not doctor he was amrik singh and he said that uh, you you know you contact him he's very influential so i immediately called him at 10:30 and then i told him about all this and he said don't worry i will i have very good connections i will find your son within this was like two months we were looking for him using a detective whom we had paid so much money we still could not find him we had reported to the cops everything was done no clue where he was and las vegas is not a very big city but still we could not find him so then the within 2 hours my son was found so i got a call at midnight saying your son is found so i talked to my son and he said he refused to come he said this is my life i want to be independent i want to be free i'm going to live here 
even if it means being on the street he had no money nothing i just even don't know how he was surviving and covid had started so all the hotels everything was shut down so uh then 2 3 days later we told all the mcdonalds and all these fast food chain uh, in that area that if you see a son like you know showed him the photograph and that you know please call us we gave money to all of them 3 days later we get a call from a mcdonald saying your son is found he's outside so um we immediately called the cops that time we requested that please do not leave him please bring him back to some gurdwara so i can come from virginia to las vegas to pick him up and then thankfully they obliged and they brought him to the same gurdwara where those people had helped uh we i went there i brought him back but when i brought him back he was okay for the first he was in a very very bad state i could not recognize my son he was totally dark in color because he was totally sunburnt he was wearing the same clothes for last two two and a half months he had not washed he had not cleaned he was just living off begging on the street so um when i when i brought him back it took a month month and half for him to recover but then there was another incident where again there was you know my uh, husband found that he's again back into the same thing so we took him ho- to the hospital we hospitalized him against his wish he was there for a month he came out he was very angry we i took him to a different city to start his life fresh and i said we're not going to stay here so i took him to dallas and uh he still had one more year of college to complete now this was a kid who was not studying he was a medical he was going to uh, you know do his medical so he uh, thank you um so he um he left biology because he couldn't he was not attending classes and so instead just majored in philosophy because he's a deep thinker by nature so his last year i said like raghav you have to complete your you know college and finally he relented um and he agreed so we were at home together and he completed every subject that he did in his final year when while he was at home he aced it he aced it he got straight a's in every subject and he came out with a 3.75 out of 4.0 gpa and he was the second uh, top i think he was yeah he was number 2 in his philosophy in his college so then you know when he graduated we were very happy we could start his life again everything we thought everything was going in the right direction but then last june suddenly because of all the fact that he had abused his body so much over the years it took a toll on his brains and he st- he he kind of got into some kind of a psychosis wherein you start talking to yourself so that started happening in june july of last year and i didn't know what was happening we had no clue i took him to the best doctor in miami somebody told me did a intensive therapy for him for 2 weeks changed his medicine um but nothing happened you know he continued and then when he came back from miami something in his head was telling him you have to leave the house so 5 days later he again left and this time again for las vegas again a month and half we were struggling every day to find him finally we found him we brought him back to my sister's place this time in new jersey we thought again that i will just change my place i'll stay in new jersey with him and he was there in my sister's house for 4 days and fifth day again he left without informing and this time he went to new york city and this time when he went to new york is a big city it's very hard to find somebody there so when he left we had no clue where he had gone where he was living which street should we find him so it was terrible and unfortunately at the same time i had a major fracture in my left ankle and i had to go through surgery and like i couldn't even get up from my bed for at least a month you know after the surgery so i so i could not go and look for him my husband had lost his hope 
on him because this was the third time he had left so my sister who was in new jersey said okay i will go and try and find him so after 14 15 days she says i'm i'll go and look around for him and the first day but that she went to new york city you can imagine and by that time um and just wanted to let you know that when my son, her son left for las vegas in july august actually of last year just a month before that i got associated with guruji somebody told me about guruji and i was like you know i didn't know whether i should go or not this was guru purnima day and he said no you must go on this day and this was before my son had left so i went i went and it was just an amazing experience for me so so when uh, so when my son now back to where he was so when he went to new york i my sister went there she didn't know where to start from which street where to go she had no clue so she said okay i'll just go to times square because that's the you know one of the famous places she went she stepped out of her car and raghav was right there before her eyes this was like you this is a miracle she called me and she said your son is found she sent me a video live video of how she was following him while he was walking around and she says look you know what i this i don't want him to see me but i have to take him to the hospital otherwise he'll be on the street again and we knew that the cops will not do anything but she said let me take a chance and talk to the cops so she called the cops immediately said look you know my nephew is here so and so please please he needs help he needs medical attention can you take him to the hospital i don't know what happened the doc- the cops obliged and they actually then you know surrounded him and while he resisted a little bit but he couldn't in front of the cops so he was taken to the hospital and he was admitted there for one month so in december he came back home he seemed fine although he was still talking to himself and then for a month month and half till january 13th he was still at home with us and we thought okay we will help him recover now his medicine of course you know because of going out of the house leaving this that he had left his medicine right so he was never regularly on the medical thing so then in january 14th all of a sudden he again left this was the fourth time he again left and this time he left for los angeles a totally different city where he had no clue he knew nobody there he didn't even know how to survive when he left for uh, los angeles again a big city we didn't know where to look so my husband said this time i'm not going looking for him i've had enough he gave up I was just praying to Guruji every day and I had a satsang on his birthday February 19th and I said that you know I will either me or my husband will go after that satsang so we had a satsang at home on on his birthday and he was and we had no clue still where he was so I told my husband to go after the satsang so he left on the 21st when he went there he also didn't know he was staying at the iskon temple and he said i don't know where to start from so we had we were carrying these leaflets you know how for missing person you carry the photograph and all that he was carrying a bunch of that he said i can just start with some you know random indian stores what can i do so on that iskon where the iskon temple was that same street he started walking the next day he had just gone to the second shop which is owned by indian guy 711 and he said have you seen my son this is his picture he said this person comes to our shop every day for coffee in the morning because we give free coffee so and he lives somewhere nearby because we see him all the time and so this was the second place that he had gone and we i was thrilled i was thrilled you know and so uh he said i'll wait out and maybe he'll come back in the evening we'll find him because he'll be sleeping somewhere behind the shop or you know in some gas station somewhere because he had no place to go so he was waiting now another miracle happened that day in the evening that while we were waiting for him to come back in the night he suddenly gets a call 
from a local cop saying that your son is here he came by himself he's asking for his dad and mom he wants to go back home i don't know somebody who had left home four times you know and three times in the last eight nine months how could he call the same day without knowing that his father is in la he had no clue he didn't even know he just went to the nearest police station and said i want to go back home so immediately my husband rushed brought him back he came back home he was found in the same clothes that he left yeah he was found in the same clothes that he had left with so we brought him home to dallas and then i decided at that time that this is not this country is not giving him anything and it is not safe for him because he will do this again so i have to get him treated in india so within 2 weeks after his coming march 7th or 8th i decided to come to india for his treatment i gave him, put him on some pretext that he's going to visit his relatives i brought him here I went through a couple of hospitals. I didn't know anything where to take him in India. Somebody told me about Bangalore so and so hospital. I took him there. It was a very tough journey because his condition was not good at all that time. He was in total hallucination, talking to himself, blabbering. A uh, very very difficult um thing to even, you know, um put him at home and see him going through that. It was very very traumatic experience as a mother to see your son in that state so i you know i did whatever anybody told me so i took him i admitted him here um he was there for one and a half months i did not see much improvement he was out of the hospital and then um through three months went by i did not see any change suddenly in july um you know my my sixth instinct told me that you know i have to change the doctor so i changed the doctor to somebody else that doctor within 10 days i started seeing improvement and then um but it was like you know it was up and down so i realized that his medicines were changing and some things were working some things were not working so just on august 18th um there was an altercation between my son and my and the doctor because my son wanted to go back to us badly and he kept you know arguing that he wants to go back and all of that again my the doctor there said uh you know that you can take him back whatever you want to do because he's not willing to be treated that same night i received a call out of the blue from a cousin of mine he's my second cousin in dallas he called me and just like that he said you know we there is a doctor uh whom we know in delhi who's really good why don't you show raghav to him so i said okay the same night i called the doctor the doctor saw, uh, saw the entire history and then he said look the medications that you were giving were not right I'm going to change that and I I can you know say that within 6 to 8 weeks you'll see a big difference. So I started him on those new medicine. Now it's been about 3 and 1/2 weeks now. I can already see a big change in him. His symptoms have come down drastically. He is a lot more like I would say looking forward. He had nothing to look forward in his life. He would just say take me back to US so I can leave your house. That is all he used to say. and i could not take him in that state to us so uh, when he started you know looking at what he wants to do in future he started talking about he wants to study further i could see a radical change you know a person who couldn't even think for himself who had no clue who was so away from reality like you know he was talking about things from 1000 1000 bc jesus christ what not there was no linkage to the real life to the real world that person now is talking about i want to do my mba he's filling up the forms 3 days ago he filled up his forms to apply for four colleges and you know everything is going you know i feel in the right direction i would say that at this point he's about 80 85% cured he still has about 15 20% journey left which i know will get you know 
over very soon i have full faith in guruji and you know and i'm just hope and pray that that happens as soon as possible so that's in short my his yeah thank you jai guruji shukrana guruji